Hi, and welcome to this lesson on the inverse function. So let me explain the inverse function with the help of an example. Okay, the example being if I buy 10 chocolate bars at 6 rand each, I will pay 60 rand, isn't it? Okay, now let's just make it a little bit more abstract. So let's say if I buy X chocolate bars at six rand each, I will pay okay y okay so can we go and work out how much will y be or what did we say we said 10 at 6 rand each which means I'm gonna pay 6 rand 10 times which is 6 times 10 which make gave me 60 so now I'm gonna pay 6 rand x times so my cost will be y is equal to 6 times x Okay, so there is a little function to work out. No matter how many chocolates I buy, what I'll pay in the end. Now, the inverse function is kind of asking the opposite question. So, what do I mean by that? Well, the opposite question for this one would be, if I have... Right, let's say if I bought... Chocolate bars of 6 rand each with 60 rand how many did I buy? well this time it's obvious Okay, that if I had used 60 Rand and I bought chocolate bars each with worth 6 Rand, how many times did my 6 Rand divide into my 60 Rand? Well, it went in 10 times. Okay, so let's write that question um, in a little bit more abstract form. If I bought... chocolate bars of 6 rand each with x rand how many did I buy? okay and this time my answer is going to be y so how will we work out y? well this time we can see how did I work out the previous one is to take the amount of money I spent divided by the unit price the price per chocolate bar and then I got my 10 so the amount of money I spent is X so Y is equal to X and divided with the 6 rand divided with the 6 and this expression is the inverse of that expression in other words kind of asking the the question back to front and you will notice that there is a little bit of a similarity between this expression and that expression both of them are expressed with y is equal to but they obviously don't answer the same question this one tells me how much I will pay while this one tells me how many I bought so y and y is not the same thing they are inverses of each other okay so um, how would we find the inverse algebraically? So let's assume we have to find the inverse of this function. Okay, so the formula for the inverse um, would then be x over 6. Okay, we know this now, but how would I have used it algebraically? What I mean by algebraically is that simply just using x's and y's and pluses and minuses and 
the works. Okay, so how am I going to do it algebraically? Well, the first step is to swap x and y. Okay, so my first step, I am going to swap x and y. In other words, I am going to have x is equal to 6y. And in my second step, I am going to simply solve for y. And this is always the case if I want to find it algebraically. Solve for y. See, if I want to get y on its own, I need to divide this side with a 6 and that side with a 6. So I get x over 6 is equal to y. Easy, isn't it? Yeah. Look at that. That's exactly what we got. y is equal to x over 6. Okay. What about notation? Obviously, I can't just use y for here and y for there because it refers to the same value. So, we know that for functions, we use the notation f of x is equal to 6x. So, I can't go and say f of x is equal to x over 6. These are two separate functions and what I've done now is to define the function one way and to define it another way without giving more conditions so this is not wrong I don't use this notation what I do use is a little f to the power of negative 1 x now it's not really to the power of it's actually just a superscript in other words it's a type of a notation um, just like you would write this in an SNS SMS to your friend uh, and it's not talking about grade 8 okay it's actually great okay you are saying how's your day Grr 8 okay so it doesn't mean grade 8 so it's a short way of writing something that's a little bit longer the same this is a short way of writing the inverse of f in terms of x okay is equal to x over 6 okay so of course this is a much more efficient way to just write this whole sentence I'm sure you won't want to write this out the whole time so this just means the inverse of f in terms of x it does not mean 1 over f okay that is something else this is a notation this is simply the notation for the inverse of f in terms of x. Cool. The next thing is, what does this look like if I were to draw a graph? Was How do the graphs relate to each other? Okay, so let's go draw a set of axes. Okay, so our f of x is equal to 6x. Okay, now we remember that this is a straight line. This straight line has got no plus c, or the plus c is actually 0. Or another way you can just look at it is when x is equal to 0, y would be equal to 0, because 6 times 0 is 0. In other words, this one passes through the origin, which means we only have one um, intercept with both axes, which means to get the other point, we are going to have to use the gradient. In this case, the gradient is equal to 6 or 6 over 1. Why do I do it like that? Because remember, the denominator tells me how many steps forward. The numerator, if positive, tells me how many steps up. So I go from this point one step forward and six steps up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That tells me how steep my graph is. And from there, I can now go and draw my line through those two points. Through those two points. Here we go. There's the graph of fx. Okay, now what about the graph of the inverse? Well, we've already calculated uh, the or worked out what the inverse is. This was the function formula for the inverse, and now you see that it's the same thing. Uh, we can just write it a little bit different. It's actually 1 over 6 times x. Okay, dividing by a 6 is the same as multiplying with 1 over 6. So this one's gradient is equal to 1 over 6. But the rest is the same. It also does not have a y-intercept other than 0. 
and so if x is equal to 0, you see the same thing, x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, so it also passes through that point, okay, and which other point? So use the gradient again, six steps forward, and this time only one step up, so one, two, three, four, five, six steps forward, one step up, okay, so one step up, and drawing our line through those two points gives me the function formula for the inverse f of x. And now you see something very curious. So let me just write this one's coordinate. That point it passed through was the point 1, 6. However, for this one, it passed through the point 6, 1. And actually, this will be the case for every point on both of these lines the x and the y will be swapped around. And we know that is the case because you remember that is how I find the inverse. I swap x and y around. So, finally, how could I have done that without using the formulas? So, if I were given the graph, I'll notice that the inverse is always the reflection in the line y is equal to x. So this is the line y is equal to x and this is the reflection. Ooh, it's not very pretty but it is. Okay. So the inverse graphically this is graphically the inverse is the reflection the inverse of a graph is its reflection in the line y is equal to x Which means that the transformation formula, every point t comma um, t x comma y becomes y comma x. Cool. I hope that was helpful. Next up, the inverse of the parabola.